the Peak Day podcast, where we talk to our friends about fertility and natural family planning. Our guests today are Nathan and Elizabeth Hoxie. They are a military family currently living in Williamsburg, Virginia. Nathan enlisted in the Air Force a year after they were married. And after six years of service, Nathan was commissioned into the Coast Guard. The Hoxies have moved eight times in 13 years of marriage and have had babies in four different states. Nathan and Elizabeth were certified as a couple-to-couple -couple lead teaching couple while stationed in California, and they've accompanied many military families over the years. Elizabeth works as a science and theology teacher and school administrator for Colby Academy, an online Catholic classical K-12 school. She enjoys bringing fertility awareness into her biology and health classes. Welcome, Nathan and Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you for being on the Peak Day podcast. We are so happy to have you. So, um, Nathan and Elizabeth, how did you meet? Can you tell me about your background and your family? I grew up one of seven dead center. Um, when I was looking for colleges, I was looking for a Catholic college that um, had a fencing team and St. Vincent fit that build. And so I started at St. Vincent. And at that point, Elizabeth was in high school at Greensburg Central Catholic, and the Benedictine monks run St. Vincent College, and their um, morning prayer is open to the public for everyone. So I was attending prayer, and Elizabeth frequented prayer also. So we kind of saw each other um, a little bit. One of the monks there, Father Fred, he had been running a bunch of retreat programs for families and couples. And I was helping him uh, with organizing childcare. And part of that is I need a bunch of people because we'd have you know, 50 to 60 children, all age ranges. So I was always looking for people. And one of the people I asked was Elizabeth since I knew her a little bit. And she said, yes. So that kind of started some of that. The first retreat I babysat for actually, Father, it was a, a Valentine's Day <laughs> couples retreat. And so we babysat the whole day and it was just Nathan and I with a room full of, I don't know, maybe 50 kids um, and it was raining. So boy, that was a zoo. Uh, and at the end of the day, Father Fred invited us up for dinner. So it was the two of us in this room full of married couples with romantic lighting and, you know, a whole shebang. So um, I ended up going to college at St. Vincent. And um, at the time we met, both of us were in various places in our discernment. Nathan was um, considering the priesthood and praying on that. And I had actually submitted an application to a Carmelite convent. Um, and so marriage was not even on our radar at that time, but we um, just grew in friendship with each other. I uh, Nathan graduated two years ahead of me and pursued his master's at Marshall University um, and our relationship deepened over that time that we were living in different states. We used to pray the rosary together in the morning over the phone. Um, and then he proposed at the end of my senior year of college and we were married shortly after. Um, and all of the monks who knew us during those college years said, boy, it's about time. <laughs> they had been taking bets on how long it would take us to get engaged. So, yeah. So did you learn about uh, natural family planning before you were dating or while you were dating? And then how did you become a teaching couple? We both did our undergrads in um, biology. And at the time we got married, I was in medical school. And so just the, the science behind natural family planning immediately appealed to us. Just the, the beauty um, of the evidence-based approach to fertility was very, very attractive to us. I remember sitting in a pharmacology class um, in my first semester of medical school, and there was a guy sitting next to me, and they were talking about all the different types of hormonal contraception. And they got my classmates said, I can't believe we're doing this to women um, with all of the side effects of those contraceptives. So we were learning natural family planning at the same time, and I was able to share a little bit about that with him. But, um, you know, just, just the science alone has always spoken to us and be, been very appealing. And that was part of the reason that we wanted to become teaching couples ourselves. So what did you find uh, easier than you expected and maybe harder than you expected when you started using uh, natural family planning together? 
so the charting itself has always come pretty easy to me. Uh, at, at first, when we were just beginning to learn differentiating between with the mucus signs was challenging. And so it's been good for me to have had that experience so I can share, share that with couples that we're teaching, that it just takes some cycles to gain that knowledge of how your body works and be able to put that information into a chart. Um, I think the bigger challenge for me with um, practicing natural family planning came later on when we started to have miscarriages. Um, on the one hand, the fact that I was charting gave us the gift of knowing about those children um, that we had conceived. But on the other hand, um, that, that, that knowledge also weighed heavy, uh, knowing, knowing about each of those losses that we wouldn't have known about otherwise had I not been charting. A lot of couples find that um, they, after learning and practicing NFP, it just kind of spills over into other aspects of their lives, um, like increased faith or uh, better communication as a couple, even like healthier food or lifestyle choices. What has your experience been? One of the things we learned early on with charting is make a determination before the cycle begins what your plans for the cycle are. Is this an uh, abstinence cycle or is this uh, um, trying to achieve pregnancy cycle? So having that conversation, especially before you hit uh, phase two, is a conversation you really want to have. So you're not trying to make a decision um, when hormones are doing their thing. I think for me, the practice of NFP, we've been, you know, we've been charting and practicing NFP as, as a lifestyle for 13 years. And I think in, at least initially at the beginning, because we are coming from a science background, um, seeing all those fertility signs and seeing all that data gave me a sense of, um, I felt like I was in control of my fertility. And that's true. I mean, I do have this knowledge and that's given me the ability to advocate for myself with healthcare professionals and all of that. But I also have come to the realization that um, God has given us the gift of a, a beautiful orderly um, biology and it, it, it makes sense. And But ultimately he's still the giver of life. Um, and I don't have control in that. And so just the process of, of uh, really surrendering um, and saying yes to whatever the Lord has in store for our family that's it's been a, a pilgrimage and a process over these years of marriage. So Elizabeth, would you say that uh, learning about like the intricacies of your fertility and gaining an understanding of how to track your cycles would have been a valuable life skill as a single person while waiting for marriage? 100%. And that's something that I feel very strongly about, which is why I bring it into my, my high school classes. I've also... Um, when we were living in Alaska, I volunteered at a pregnancy center there and offered mother or mother daughter classes, and met one on one with um, with single students who just wanted to learn more about how their bodies work. So yes, I think that's a tremendously valuable skill for women to learn whether or not they're married. So you mentioned that um, your Nathan, your longest deployment um, or separation was about three months. Um, did you have an opportunity to work with other couples who have maybe been separated for a longer period of time? And um, how did you yes. guide them through that time? Yeah, so when we started teaching, I was Air Force, and we had a variety of couples who took the course for different reasons. But yeah, we had friends who, they had like six month deployments. So that is a longer period for them. And some of them had back to back deployments where they did we're gone for six, come back for three, back out for six. So uh, a lot more. And part of it was, you know, the parishes in the military tend to be very tight. Um, and loads of children, loads of kids where you, know, you do have, you know, that mother with a couple kids, three, four, um, six kids who needs an extra hand at church, just wrangling kids. So, you know, sometimes that's just, you know, one of the older couples plopping themselves at the end of that pew so they can box the kids in from being able to run out. Sometimes that's just, you know, having a conversation, you know, everyone there has been through it or knows somebody who has went through a deployment. Um, and there's a lot that goes into that. 
Yes. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we've talked a couple of times about NFP as being a lived experience. And I think that in a military parish, it really becomes so clear that being open to life is not just about being open to a pregnancy. It's open to life at all stages. Um, and so I, th there was just such a beautiful pro-life witness in those military parishes where people would drop anything, uh, drop everything to be able to jump in and help someone whose husband was deployed or was in the middle of some sort of crisis because military families don't have their extended family close by. They only have each other. Um, and so that, I mean, it was such a privilege to witness that and be part of that community. Um, and that's what I would hope for in our in our culture of life in general is that we are open to life at all stages and are willing to be um, the face of Christ to others in, in all of those kind of messy places of, of life. How do you encourage couples who have different family situations uh, to persevere and, and use natural family planning? So I, I think one of the interesting things for us is we've been teaching couples for the last seven years now. And almost all of the students that we've had as teaching couples have been struggling with infertility or secondary infertility. And so the, um, the guidance that we have offered them, you know, as they're going through an experience of deployment is more along the lines of let's keep charting, let's know where you are in your cycle, um, because their, their hope is to conceive and they have maybe six months of deployment and then maybe a limited time together. And so having that knowledge of where they are in the cycle when um, the husband or wife comes back from deployment is that much more important. What do you like about teaching couples natural family planning? Working with couples, walking through their life where they're at, meeting them and then accompanying them. Um, the scientific side, science, like I enjoy the charts, interpreting, especially like, oh, here's a weird one. Like, oh, really? Let's look at that and see, you know, what's weird about it and where that comes from and look at that. Um, instructing, instructing is fun, um, passing on knowledge and like checking for that understanding and helping people understand something new. Yeah, one of my favorite things about being a couple to couple league instructor specifically is that we do have the couple to couple approach. And so it's not just me giving information to the other woman, it's us as a couple sharing with them as a couple about their shared fertility. Um, and I think that it's a really powerful approach and a very important approach. Um, and then, you know, the biologist in me th thrills every time we get to the hormone interaction slides and talking about the effect of estrogen and progesterone and all of that. Um, but I think also, like I mentioned, we just, the, the way things have worked out for us is the majority of our students have been dealing with infertility. And so it is such a gift and a joy to be able to offer them some hope in that we um, have one couple in particular that we did not instruct. They learned a different method in order to be able to seek help from um, the St. Paul Institute in Nebraska, but they had 11 years of infertility and were finally able to conceive. And so that's just I mean, a miracle in every sense of the word, um, but but that's the I think the most amazing gift of natural family planning is it does give hope to those couples who are carrying the cross of infertility. So, uh, what would be one practical piece of advice for couples who want to use uh, natural family planning in their marriage, but maybe don't know what to expect in this practical day to day use? A lot of it boils down to yep, communication, communication with each other, communication with your instructor, communication. If you are unsure of what is going on, and that's one of the strong points of couple to couple league is, you know, the, the network that is connected through those teaching couples that you can continue to ask for input. So Elizabeth, after you, you know, experienced your miscarriages, um, you know, what did you do to um, prepare yourself for a possible next pregnancy? And were you able to, um, you know, uh, have the help of uh, a doctor or a healthcare professional in that process? Yes. After my third miscarriage, I felt like I really needed to have some answers um, before we could try to conceive again. And so 
I went to um, the obstetrician who had delivered our third child. I respected him a lot. He was a very good doctor, um, but he was uh, not Christian or, or Catholic and um, was, was very secular uh, in his practice. Um, and so I went to him and I explained uh, my situation and, and how I had just been through my third miscarriage. And he, um, he took me very seriously and ran every test he could think of to try and get me some answers. And then we sat together and looked through the literature that Couple to Couple Leave has on uh, progesterone therapy. And um, he came around to the idea that that would be a good way to support me in future pregnancies. So I was really impressed that this was a doctor who had been practicing medicine for 30 years at that point, and he was still willing to look at the new research um, and change his approach to the management of my next pregnancy. So I want to encourage couples to, to do the same, to not be afraid to advocate for yourself based on the knowledge and information that you have. There are some wonderful Catholic doctors out there, but they're few and far between, and sometimes you don't have access to a Catholic provider um, but it's, it's never too late for a doctor to learn something new. And, um, a good doctor is always in the process of learning. Well, Nathan and Elizabeth, thank you so much for, uh, being on the peak day podcast and sharing your really great story of military life and natural family planning with us. We, uh, we appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Mm-hmm.